What's up, Storted the Crew? It's yours truly, Storted. Right now, I'm about to get into that. Yeah, D Roy. Hey, Trap Lord Ross. Um, it's been a while since I done some uh some about T Roy. Hopefully, hopefully, Trap Lord Ross can give a better insight. Um, I will be putting the eye on the uh the last T Roy video I did. They all got four, four to five thousand likes, and they all did very very well. All right, this one actually still getting views. Crazy work. Let's see what else. Still getting views. Still getting views. Okay. That being said, we can try the 4,000 likes on this one. Um, let's get to it. Tense themes of violence, death, and gang activity. This video is an educational documentary. It does not intend to glorify, incite, or encourage illegal behavior. All of the information is taken from public sources and is shown on the basis of fair use. I've made every effort to ensure accuracy of the sources, but I am not responsible for any content third parties have published. Every effort has been made to censor this video in accordance with YouTube's community guidelines, but if you want to see an uncut version of this video, you can do so on patreon.com slash traplawross. But if you're not interested in that, just hit the subscribe button and prepare to hear one of the craziest stories ever told. When it comes to famous gangsters from Chicago's drill scene who never rapped, there are few names that ring bells as loudly as T-Roy. This is largely due to some of the biggest and most influential drill rappers ever, I'm like Chief Keith, Lil Durk, King Von. No, no none against T-Roy. You know, whatever he, you know, you know, ain't. But Melly? He wasn't even associated with famous rappers besides Duck. That was the f most famous rapper he was associated with. <laughs> this nigga T-Roy, you see the list. You see the list. You see the list. Like I said, there's nothing against him. He just... Shoot. With him, I don't know. It's a little difference, you feel me? Rondo number nine and others commonly mentioning him in their songs, often rapping about this pocket-sized savage who stood at only five foot two, carrying guns and not being afraid to use them, essentially being one of their most admired shooters. T-Roy, real name James Johnson, got his nickname from his second name, Troy, which is appropriately derived from the old Irish word meaning foot soldier, someone who's really in the field during wartime. T-Roy was born and raised in the infamous Parkway Gardens apartment complex, better known nowadays as Oblock. Oblock's located on the south side of Chicago, on the border of Woodlawn, more specifically West Woodlawn and Washington Park neighborhoods. But Oblock is not only an apartment complex with almost 700 units, but it's also the name of an alleged gang that resides there. A gang most recently made famous by six members who were convicted of the murder of oh, rapper man. FBG Duck. I've got to check the audio. Ah! who allegedly belonged to the rival gang STL or nearby St. Lawrence and 63rd. T-Roy himself was an alleged member of the Oblock set, a street gang who pledged allegiance to the historical's Black Disciples gang founded by legendary Chicago gangster David Barksdale. T-Roy himself had two brothers who were known on the streets as HK and Slutty. Both of those brothers have since tragically passed away, but their mother would also raise three other cousins as her own, Zell Munna, Eli, and Maria, with the first of these, Zell Munna, now also dead, taking his own life after being identified as a shooter in the murder of FBG Duck 2. But the story of T-Roy's siblings could very well be its own video. But for T-Roy, growing up on the south side of Chicago, he would become accustomed to death at a very early age. In 2009, he would seemingly be strongly impacted by the tragic death of a young woman from Parkway Gardens called Keita, who seemingly died from natural causes. But clearly this woman had a huge impact on T-Roy, who even went on to name his own Facebook account after her. But this was also a time when youths like T-Roy were beginning to truly experience the violence taking place in the streets of Chicago. In 2011, <coughs> Block would end up losing and I ain't gonna sit here and cap with uh cap y'all so I um when I because I've been heard his name but when I first learned learned about T-Roy it was like the day he passed for real and um one of my homies uh we still homies but we don't talk to this day but we don't we don't talk much but uh he was real heavy with the Chirac shit Man, he went by Chirac Legends. But anyway, he told me like, nah, this, 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 this is, this is, the, it was a Valentine's Day 2017, I believe. But anyway, he basically put me on a game like, it's about to get walky out here. I, I ain't know. But the, 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 the kind of see what transpired behind this man. Man, I wish I had the DMs. He ain't ran through four, five Instagrams. But dude said that to him. He said, uh, it's about to get Walkie out here. It's show sure enough. It, it. Yeah, yeah, I just want to share that little cool story, you know. Two important members to gang violence, OD and Platoon. The first of the. But that's just you know, more more point proven on 
Guy, it's O.D. Perry and how they felt about him. was the very person whom the gang O-Block would take their name from, with Parkway Gardens formerly being known in the streets as Wick City, but after O.D.'s death, the gangsters there would proudly call themselves O-Block. Undoubtedly, these deaths played a major role in making a young T-Roy become increasingly active in the streets, and not long after this, he would allegedly begin his years-long revenge campaign dishing out deadly violence towards the opposition of O-Block, with T-Roy ultimately gaining a reputation as one of Chicago Drill's most savage shooters, all of which without ever rapping a single bar. Motherfucker up on me, I will shoot you. No problem. I will shoot you. Leave me the f alone. Cause I stay with my savages. Well, I'm solo right now. Bruh, I, I I ain't seen the clip of, of, of them doing doing whatever happened in that store. This look, look listen. Now look listen. What ain't that the same jacket? <laughs> Leave me the f alone. Cause I stay with my savages. Well, I'm solo right now. But leave me the f alone. Don't be that damn. Cause if you don't know if I was on your ass, cause I ain't gonna get the motherfucker. You know, looking at you, none of that shit. I'm just gonna storm you, damn ass. Storm, storm, bitch. What's up, girl? What's up, what's up, girl? 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 On the 3rd of December 2011, at around 3.45pm, a young man named Dale Fisher, also known as Squirrel, was walking with a friend to the corner store near 62nd and St. Lawrence, when a silver two-door car would pull up next to them. Someone leaned out the window, opening fire, hitting Dale several times. This was a brutal and senseless slaying, but even more brutal was the fact that in the aftermath, someone would take a graphic picture of Dale's body laying on the sidewalk. It's moments like this that really drive home just how dark life in the Chicago streets can really be. After the shooting, and after- Cause guess who I got a Patreon for? Mr. Trap or Ross himself. Hold up. Almost five minutes in. Let me see. Let me see. I'll have to blur When it comes to famous gangsters from Chicago's played a major role would rather spend time however over the area. However, Dale drive home. On the 3rd of December 2011, at around 3.45pm, a young man named Dale Fisher, also known as Squirrel, was walking with a friend to the corner store near 62nd and St. Lawrence, when a silver two-door car would pull up next to them. Someone leaned out the window, opening fire, hitting Dale several times. This was a brutal and senseless slaying, but even more brutal was the fact that in the aftermath, someone would take a- And it's like a crowd of people just around him. This one lady, like, she, she like a parent or something, or something identifying him. Golly. I ain't even about to... I gotta pay the five dollars for, uh... After being pictured on the ground, Dale was taken to the Strogo Hospital, where he was pronounced dead about half an hour later. Police would report claims that Dale was shot a total of 12 times. And according to Dale's friends and family, he wasn't really a gang member and would rather spend time at a youth center than on the streets. Dale's family had actually moved away from the Washington Park and Woodlawn area to the Chapman neighborhood about three miles south. But unfortunately, Dale would still come back to his old stomping grounds to hang out with his friends, some of whom were indeed affiliated with the sets in the area that were enemies of O-Block. This included STL on St. Lawrence Avenue and EBT on Eberhart on 64th and Jaro City on 62nd, as well as crews within them like FYB and FBG. In the years following Dale's death, many of these people would tweet about Dale being an innocent civilian who had nothing to do with any gang rivalries in the area. However, Dale was seemingly around real gang members who had many enemies in the streets. One video of Dale, seemingly taken within a day of his murder, would even circulate online. Dale would be seen in pictures throwing up gang signs, suggesting that he himself had already been sucked into the gangbanging lifestyle. And seemingly, his connection to gangs would come from family ties, as Dale's big brother was a known St. Lawrence member who went by the name Main Main. Main Main was even seemingly mentioned in the police reports regarding the murder of O.D. Perry, with O.D.'s mother stating that she had heard that a man called Main Main was behind O.D.'s murder. Dale's killer has never been caught, but there have been several factions and suspects 
suspects who have been rumoured to have been behind this murder. For example, in 2012, rapper billionaire Black's brother Richie Jerk would seemingly implicate the Lamron set for killing Dale. But another popular suspect in the murder has been D. Rose, who belonged to the 600 set who were very close to Oblock themselves. However, Oblock's own T. Roy has also been suspected of being involved in Dale's murder, with the implication that this may well have been the first of as many as 10 murders that he had committed for his gang. Although some have claimed that T. Roy couldn't have been involved as he may well have been locked up at the time of the murder. However, recently, this case received a crucial update during the recent trial relating to the murder of FBG Duck, when one of the cooperators, allegedly FBG Butter, would tell investigators that Dale had indeed been killed by T. Roy and D. Rose. While the case was never definitively solved, the willingness of federal prosecutors to name T. Roy as a killer in paperwork speaks volumes. However, this was only the first of many rumoured murders which T. Roy was thought to have played a role in. The next one would see him allegedly being assisted by his best friend, infamous killer and rapper from Oblock, King Von. Hey, how y'all feel about but, uh, Butter doing all that? Because at first, he tried to say he wasn't. And then, goddamn it, it came out. Only told them dead people. It's like... I don't know why, why Front Show moved from the, from the jump. Well, okay, hold on, because I do remember uh, it got said that he only did that to get out of a... a Something else he got caught up on. <clears throat> Immunity. So. But yeah. I know I know. I got some people that played the streets real heavy to watch me and shit. So. You know. Y'all the opinion I'm really asking for. Uh, me personally. Me personally. You can't do both. That's what I think personally. If you want to be. Go off and, yeah, go do that. But if you want to, why would you do that if you want to keep doing this? I just feel like you can't do both. But shit, uh, 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 uh. I ain't going to lie. It depends on your platform, but the ROI on a butter interview, shh. Yeah. The ROI on a but on a butter interview is, it, it might it yeah, you might get your bread back in some more if you know how to play it right. You hit them with the clip 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 then then drop the full one or drop the full one then clip 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 yeah, you gonna get your you gonna get your bread back for sure. Man, we got talking about the whole little, but yeah, how y'all feel about that? I only brought up I did yeah, 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 I brought up the interview shit because of. Uh, it's like he, he can remove himself from it. No. But it's like every interview they ask about this. Uh, guys went through all that. All this shit true too. About five months after the murder of Dale, on the 28th of April 2012, at around 9.30pm, a 23-year-old man called Doc, or King Doc, real name Marlon Monroe, was walking near 63rd and St. Lawrence, the heart of STL's territory, when somebody opened fire as he was in front of the corner store, striking him once in the chest. Doc would then try to escape his attackers across the road through a patch of tall weeds in an empty lot in the 6300 block of St. Lawrence, where he would ultimately succumb to his injuries, passing away on the spot. However, when police would come to investigate the reports of shots fired, they couldn't see Doc laying there in the tall weeds and would leave him there. And it wasn't until Doc's relative, a teenage boy named Modell McCambry, would go through that empty lot on his way home hours later that he would actually stumble upon Doc's body. According to and Doc's family, crazy. he had been going through a rough patch in his life and had that's recently been free because, um, freed after doing crazy. a prison bit, which he was seemingly also celebrating on his social media. Doc had only recently begun getting his life together, getting his GED in prison, and now he wanted to get himself a painter's license to start making an honest living. In fact, the night he was killed, Doc had actually been at his aunt's property doing some maintenance, shortly before his life was cut short. However, Doc was also allegedly gang affiliated, particularly with the EBT set named after Eberhart Avenue, who were close with several other gang sets in the area, including STL, Jaro City, and MOB. People seemingly affiliated with these sets would also mourn Doc's death on their social media, some of them even seemingly alluding to knowing exactly who had killed Doc 
and vowing revenge. The police would also monitor on social media that members of these gangs held Lamron and Brick City, which is an older name for 600's hood, responsible for Doc's murder. But on the other hand, in 2013, M.O.B. Beans would tweet how he was about to do his ops like Wick, the former name of Oblock, had done to Doc. Now, despite there not being many hard facts that are publicly known about the suspect, online Chiracologists on Reddit who follow the Chicago drill scene closely have theorized that T-Roy may well be the most likely culprit in the murder of Doc. This is seemingly based on factors like T-Roy being known for aiming to the chest and for killing affiliates that weren't directly involved in the many beasts that Oblock had. There are also claims that EBT had been talking about catching T-Roy on Facebook immediately following the death of Doc, but ultimately this murder remained unsolved despite many people believing that this killing may well have been carried out by a group of shooters from Oblock which included both King Von and T-Roy. Interestingly, King Von would start a Twitter account in the months that followed this murder, where he would seemingly tweet openly about his friendship with T-Roy and their activities in the streets together, saying that they shoot people like it's nothing, and tweeting openly that he will kill. This nigga said, I just read that tweet, me and T-Roy like Phineas and Ferb, I already know what we finna do today, what? With this sort of thing casually being tweeted by Von and T-Roy, it's no surprise then that within a matter of months, they would both be suspected of yet another murder in the neighborhood. <laughs> In the early morning hours of August the 8th, 2012, a 28-year-old man named Terrell Joshua, known on the streets as Dirty Rell, was at the corner of 56th and Wabash. Here, he was shot several times. The police would arrive to the scene soon after, finding Rell motionless on the ground, where he was then taken to hospital and pronounced dead around 4 a.m. Like Doc, Rell was affiliated with some of the gangs in this area, such as STL and Jaro City, and members of these gangs would mourn his death on social media after his passing. But Rell was even older than Doc, and he had seemingly moved away from this area in Chicago some years ago to the city of Peoria, around two and a half hours drive from where he was killed. It's unclear why Rell was in Chicago the night of his murder, or exactly who killed him, but once again, T-Roy's name would become attached to the case, as would King Von's, who would ominously post the previous night how there was a smell of homicide in the air, implying that Von may well have been driving around looking for ops that very night, and then posting the next night within hours of Rell being shot, showing that Von was indeed awake at the time of the murder. Once again, also D. Rose from 600, who was known to slide with Oblock, was connected to this case as part of a theory in the legendary Chirac wiki, with it believing that D. Rode himself assisted in the murder. Now, while it's not clear exactly who shot Rel, it seems that his friends thought that this murder was indeed done by Oblock, because the very next night, they would exact their I mean, revenge. other than affiliation, what, 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 what? That's it? He ain't... Was a sworn, he wasn't a sworn enemy, he was just affiliated? That night, on the 8th of August, an Oblock member by the name of White White, or Whitey, like real name Tony Dunn, was hanging out he with King... He was old. He was older. And he was from Peoria, or lived in Peoria. And Von around Oblock, where they were celebrating Von's upcoming birthday. Von would enter a store near the apartment complex while Whitey would wait outside. Unfortunately, it was there when Whitey was shot to death by a member of Jaro City called 50 Shot, who was then caught by the police right near the scene of the murder, even shooting it out with the cops. It would take over 10 years for justice to finally be delivered in this case, as in 2023, 50 Shot would finally be sentenced for the murder of White White and two attempted murders of the police officers who arrested him, with him receiving a whopping 115 year sentence. As I've discussed in length in my video, King Von wraps first serial killer, this was a moment that would make King Von yearn for revenge. After the death of White White, Von began a determined sliding campaign with the goal of killing all of Oblock's ops, and Von would later rap on his song Demon that it was literally witnessing Whitey's murder that turned him into a demon, motivating him to commit numerous murders. And as Von would often discuss, his number one partner during this campaign to kill was his best friend, T-Roy, and soon they would seemingly catch another body together, this time with a dark connection to the first man that Von and the second that T-Roy had allegedly killed. About two months after the death of Dirty Rel and Whitey, Modell McCambry, who had found his relative Doc dead earlier that year, was walking with his friends on the street in STL's territory. A gunman would approach them on foot and begin shooting at Modell. At this point, his cousin Miles Turner would heroically attempt to shield Modell with his own body, also ending up getting shot numerous times. Miles would miraculously end up surviving the incident despite being confined to a wheelchair, as was seen in a media piece about him where he met former governor of Illinois, Pat Quinn, to talk about surviving gang violence. Unfortunately, despite his heroic attempts to shield his cousin, Modell would would end up losing his life that night. The police would soon determine that the shooting had indeed been gang related as part of the, the ongoing rivalry between Oblock or Wick City and STL, which Modell was allegedly affiliated with. This time, police were even uh, able to figure out two specific suspects, one of these being King Von, real name Davon Bennett, who they determined to be the shooter, accompanied by T-Roy, who had allegedly been at the scene with Von. Unfortunately, due to many witnesses refusing to speak with the investigators out of fear of retaliation, both Von and T-Roy would ultimately not be charged for this murder. They would continue to torment their ops on social media, seemingly 
bragging openly about their victims, with Von literally tweeting the day after the murder that him and T-Roy just can't stop killing, and telling their Twitter followers to stay tuned and find out who will die next. However, after Von's death in 2020, detectives would finally get witnesses to come forward, and the case was ultimately closed, with Von determined to have been the shooter. For the next murder that Von and T-Roy were suspected of being involved in was the killing of another high-profile shooter in a rival Chicago gang, and yet another killing that's been shrouded in mystery and theories for years now. Oh, the Boss Trail one. I ain't did a video on Boss Trail. I ain't did a video on Boss Trail or Lil B. I realized that not too long ago. Matter of fact, are we here? Are we here? Yeah, I ain't did one. In the morning of November the 8th, 2012, not even a month after the murder of Modell, another STL member would be found in critical condition in the Wrightwood neighborhood in the far southwest side of Chicago. This time, it was a 17-year-old Rodney Stewart, better known in the streets as Boss Trell from STL, who had been shot once in the back of the head and was found laying dead in a gangway, with a Glock handgun tucked underneath his body. Only a few hours before being found, Boss Trell had made a tweet stating that he was going back to sleep. So if he was going back to bed, how did he end up shot outside next to houses that he seemingly had no connection to? This shooting was actually heard by several several residents in the area, but only a few had seen anything. But one of these witnesses had spotted a thin-billed man with an average height wearing a white sweater running away from the scene. Another witness had seen a black van driving away from the scene, as well as another man wearing a hoodie, carrying a backpack, and running while yelling for help. While the police were trying to piece together what had happened from these tiny tidbits of information, Boss Trell had been rushed to hospital, where he would continue to fight for his life. Later that morning, Boss Trell's friend began reacting to the news of him being in hospital, and soon FBG Cash would post a picture on Twitter of himself holding Boss Trell's hand. And he would also post several tweets that sounded like threats and antagonism towards the people that he believed had shot Boss Trell, where he said that he was about to go nuts and turn the streets into a gun range. Only a few minutes later, T-Roy and King Von would begin a tweet storm of their own, where they both heartlessly mocked Boss Trell, as well as seemingly implying that they had something to do with his shooting. With T-Roy tweeting, man down, Von tweeting, lol, the struggle, T-Roy would even tweet, f him, die slow, and going on to reference the infamous true crime reality show, First 48, suggesting that he had just first 48 ed his victim. King Von would then follow up with another heartless tweet, saying that his ops aren't dying on time, a reference to Boss Trell's status in hospital. And then T. Roy himself would reference the situation mockingly, tweeting, No Trell, stay alive. Unfortunately, later that night, Boss Trell would pass away from his injuries. But still, even the next day, King Von would continue to taunt STL, claiming that STL... It was the no one. That one, that one, that one took the cake. In the icing, for sure. Sure. Really stood for steady taking losses, as well as referencing Boss Trail directly, yeah, tweeting, he ain't a boss to him. Tragically, it would later be reported that Boss Trail seemingly knew that he was in danger in Chicago, and that he'd even had plans to move to Iowa, where he had a lead on a new job. In fact, the very night he shot, he had already had a bus ticket bought to get out of town. His fears were very much warranted, because Boss Trail himself was rumored to be a known shooter, with many believing that he had killed for his gang too, particularly Sheroid from Oblock. That same reporting would then make claims that many around Trail, including his girlfriend, as well as the detectives investigating the death, actually knew who'd done it, but without credible witnesses, including Trell's girlfriend, who said that she didn't feel comfortable talking about people she thought were involved, they ultimately couldn't bring any charges. But given that Vaughn and T-Roy were heavily implying their involvement in the murder on social media, it would be no surprise that the internet would also begin to think they must have had something to do with the murder. Images would even circulate of a photo that T-Roy shared, showing his Timberland boots covered in blood, with the implication that the blood may well have belonged to Boss Trell. These rumours were later further fueled by- No, well, I can show a boot, right? Von would continue to taunt STL, claiming that he had killed for his gang too, particularly must have had something to do with the murder. Images would even circulate of a photo that T. Roy shared, showing his Timberland boots covered in blood, with the implication that the blood may well have belonged to Boss Trell. These rumours were later further I want to call these niggas villains, because it's like a you no, know, with villains, it's, it's like a it's like a sick game for real. With villains, you know, it's a sick game. Like um, I ain't about to get the name of that, but yeah, buddy really had on a boot. The uh, the boot was full of blood. <laughs> but the people piecing it together, together, saying it's somebody else's blood, is crazy. By people close to. That motherfucker got the plan. Broad wave.
Oblock and STL, who would seemingly admit that Von and T-Roy were those responsible. Von allegedly killed Trill, him and T-Roy. Only the streets know and only the people who did it know. So that's why I'm saying the legend. <laughs> he had, he had, he had, he got more than five. He caught that quick, he caught. Nigga, he was, listen to his raps. Like, he was really like telling y'all what he was doing and like how he go, like, he had changed his shoes, he catching before he even hit school. Like, you know, like he called Trail, some goofy ass on my podcast telling me he ain't boy on God on OD Soul. Boss Trail is folks work. Like stop that. Like yeah. that was folks work. He did that. People would point out that Von and T Roy had seemingly been driving around Chicago the night leading up to the morning that Trail was found. However, there were also other suspects from O Block, particularly next year in 2013, after a well respected O Block member called Jay Money, real name Jerome Wood, was ultimately killed. Immediately following that murder, friends of Boss Trail would tweet saying RIP to Boss Trail, insinuating that it may have been Jay Money who had been the trigger man, with them celebrating his passing. Then, the following year, in 2014, STL member FBG Young would post a tweet that seemingly implied that Boss Trail had died due to some kind of betrayal taking place. Then, in 2015, another good friend of Boss Trail, rapper FBG Duck, who was also Boss Trail's cousin, would rap in his song My Homies that it was actually a girl who had betrayed Trail and caused his death. This would seemingly match with the earlier reporting of Boss Trail's aunt blaming his girlfriend for not cooperating with the police. The rumor regarding a girl setting Boss Trail up would eventually develop into a completely new direction. According to this rumor, Trail used to leave his guns at a girl's house, but that girl had a brother who ended up taking the gun. This brother was part of a gang called Quiet Money, who apparently controlled the area around where Boss Trail was found shot. On the morning of his death, he had supposedly gone to get a gun back from the brother, but this would ultimately wind up with him getting killed, with this story being substantiated by people who were close to the situation, such as EBT BG. Trail, BT, the ops didn't do that. They didn't do that. STL didn't get no get back for BT. But anyway, he got wrapped up in some trying to go get his pipe back that is brother than took from him. Like I say, everybody took guns from STL. This rumor hasn't been proven to be true either, and the murder of Boss Trail is still an open case. It's important to mention that there's never been any definitive proof exactly who was the girl that supposedly set Boss Trail up, and what exactly was her role in this supposed setup. Many have naturally accused Boss Trail's supposed girlfriend, but there have been multiple women in his life, which was something his supposed girlfriend had also implied. So we may never know who did it, but regardless of exactly who it was, if the tweets were anything to go by, to Von and T-Roy, the murder and death of their rivals was just an everyday activity, and with that in mind, it would only be a matter of time before they indeed killed again. On the 19th of November 2012, about but 10 days after Boss Trail had passed, a man in his... Then again, it's, it's kind of wacky in a sense, off the strength of... Yeah. His 30s, named James Holman, was standing in front of his apartment when four men reportedly exited a nearby apartment building and approached him, at least one of them opening fire, hitting Holman in his forearm and chest, with these wounds later proving fatal when he was rushed to hospital. The shooting happened in the 6,000 block of South Michigan Avenue, which is in the heart of 600's hood. This immediately raised the question, who, other than people affiliated with 600, would exit a building in that area before immediately shooting somebody? This question particularly arises when you know the fact that Holman was an alleged member of the Gangster Disciples, apparently being better known in the streets as Lil James or Baby J, with him also allegedly having ties to the MOB set who 600 and their affiliates such as Oblock were in a bitter feud with. Moreover, the deadly duo King Von and T-Roy would once again begin their tradition of seemingly implicating themselves in the murder on social media, with Von clowning somebody only 20 minutes after Lil James was shot, continuing later that night by tweeting that he was killing GDs often, followed by a now infamous deleted tweet where Von outright claimed that he had killed 5 GDs and shot 10. Meanwhile, T-Roy would seemingly clarify who the Oblockians were clowning by asking if anybody had gotten shot yesterday. Von would also seemingly match the description of the shooter in the police incident report, although this likely doesn't prove much given his rather average height and weight. However, once again, there would also be other suspects, including members of 600 such as Bite Down, with rumours circulating of three murders that he was suspected of committing. Another suspect that was considered was M Thing, the brother of prominent 600 member D Thang. But whoever may have been responsible for James's death, the fact is King Von was arrested only a few days after for unlawful use of a weapon. Von would end up behind bars for over a year, leaving his best friend T Roy alone in the streets of Chirac to continue waging war against his ops. And allegedly, while Von was gone, T Roy would end up committing several more murders before he himself would ultimately end up losing his life. Of course, yeah, why would he stop? been running the smooth game since. 
T Boy's next alleged murder victim was somewhat more. Mind you, the man passed away 2017. Valentine's Day. We're talking about 2013 right now. Yeah. More mysterious than the others, who was so far all from Race. rival sets near Oblock. This man was a 27 year old called Stunner, real name Frederick Taylor. Stunner belonged to a gang called TTB, or Train to Blow, which also went by the name Su Wu and FOA, meaning family overall. This set hailed from the so called low end on the north side of Washington Park, near the shores of Lake Michigan, particularly from the public housing projects on Lake Park Avenue between 39th and 40th Street. As a 27 year old, Stunner was already a Chicago OG who apparently had a long history in the streets, and he had also tried to make it as a rapper with songs circulating in early 2011 and possibly even earlier, with his crew Street Gang, which included other rappers from TTB and FOA. From his music and social media, it's clear that Stunner had friends and enemies all over Chicago, as he would affiliate with other sets such as Rec City all the way in the west side, whilst also dissing their ops such as Faceworld and BOC or BOCO, both of whom had their hoods near Rec City. Street Gang was also seemingly dissing Oblock's close affiliate Lamron, as well as Chief Keith and his GBE crew that Oblock at the time was still friendly with. And although far away from Oblock, TTB were also close with many of Oblock's enemies, including 051 Young Money and Jaro City. So they were therefore beefing with Oblock and its affiliates like 600 by association, as seen in tweets by prominent member TTB Nez. And then, around the 9th of June 2013, at around 1am, Stunner was in traffic with friends on the busy Dan Ryan Expressway. They were driving southbound on a slip ramp between the 71st and 75th streets, when somebody would pull up, shooting up their car, hitting Stunner and a woman whilst missing a third person who could later be seen speaking with the police on the side of the road. Stunner and the woman would be taken to a hospital where he was unfortunately pronounced dead. The following day, the news of Stunner's passing would reach his friends and family. However, that's not all they would post, because already that same day, one of the most well-known members of his set, TTB Nez, would tweet an ominous message, implying that Oblock, aka Wick City, had been behind the hit and promising revenge. Meanwhile, T-Roy was seemingly gone from Twitter for several days following the shooting until he would return on the 13th. Moreover, FBG Dutchie from STL would tweet to T-Roy that day, telling him to bail out next time, implying that T-Roy had been in jail, which might have been related to the shooting of Stunner. Then, in the coming months, other TTB members would repeat a similar message as Nez, this time directly saying that it was Oblock that had killed Stunner, as well as dissing Oblock's affiliates such as Lamron, 300, and 600. They would also diss and threaten specific Oblock members such as senior member Boss Top by quoting the classic Billionaire Black and FBG Duck Oblock diss song, Expose, where Billionaire Black raps he'll catch Boss Top coming out of Oblock. And of course, he would diss T-Roy with tweets referencing his height and saying that his casket will be little, and when they catch him, they're going to burn his face. Therefore, it's not a surprise that many people online have been convinced that it was Oblock that killed Stunner. Particularly, two members have been thought to have been behind the hit, T-Roy and Boss Money, who supposedly had a personal beef with Stunner before his death. However, it was one particular video that got many convinced that it must have been T-Roy, a video that's actually T-Roy's last video ever, where he's seen toting a gun and saying that ops cannot do him like Lil Mark and Stunner. They were not Stunner me. <laughs> yeah, I remember saying No, that. no, I keep that 33. <laughs> but this ain't a 33. <laughs> Whoever the killer from Oblock may have been, TTB would allegedly respond with strong force. Because in 2015, one of the members would tweet saying that after Stunner died, TTB had been up for an entire week trying to avenge his death. Ultimately, even if T-Roy was the killer of Stunner, he would evade his ops for several years, continuing to cause carnage for his enemies and apparently even innocent civilians. What this old man do? A few months after the death of Stunner, T-Roy would allegedly get active again, this time with particularly tragic consequences. On the morning of September the 17th, 2013, a local elderly man named Billy Sargent was sitting at a bus shelter near 61st and King Drive, a location known for being a hotspot for violence, as it borders the two neighborhoods, Washington Park, in this case known as the territory of O-Block affiliated sets 600 and Front Street, as well as West Woodlawn, where rival sets like Jaro City and Taekwon World would stay. While sitting at the bus stop, like he used to do every morning, someone would approach and start shooting, hitting Billy several times. 67-year-old Billy Sargent would be taken to a hospital where he would unfortunately be pronounced dead, and his friend would later give a video interview to the Chicago Tribune remembering his dear old friend. He, wasn't, he was the last person on earth that should ever get shot for sitting on the corner. He, all the old gangster boys, they knew him. This was somebody that was just, I don't know, man. I don't know. That's a shame, man. I'm horrible, man. Listen, do you know right now, I have seen y'all okay in this neighborhood with my kids going to the park at least 15 to 20 times this summer. All right, bro. This ain't crazy. I know it may sound strange. I know it may sound strange. But y'all know how I feel about the NBC. 
that old man ain't had shit to do with nothing. I always say this. You signed up for this. This person signed up for that. Play ball. Almost like signing up to play sports. Right? You know what it is when you, when, when you, when you sign up to play sports. You know, you know what that life gonna bring. You know, you know what the the pain and aches of muscle sore. Like you know the you know all this shit. You feel me? So it's hard to be like, stop playing football. Stop playing football. All right, now this old man that's sitting on the bus. Hey. It's I'm saying I I I, I don't want to cut my roots. But when I bring my grandkids down here to go in the park, when I, you know what? Question, not question, answer. I came out of that store three weeks ago. They stopped the bus right here and all the police, somebody shot at a moving bus right here, shot somebody in the hand. This was three weeks ago. It's on, it's in the police records. Cause we stood over there and asked the police, like, you know, what happened? And I told them I was tired parole later. So they said, man, somebody shot the bus. So that's what it's like now, you know. Police would tell the media that the shooter may have actually been shooting at a rival gang member. And after the shooting, witnesses would report the shooter running away near the scene, apparently his description matching that of a 14 to 15 year old boy, who was apparently eventually captured and interviewed, but ultimately released without charges as he had an alibi. Interestingly, the police would also arrest T. Roy the very next day, accusing him of criminal trespassing, along with E-Dog and BJ from O-Block. Although the charge is seemingly completely unrelated to the shooting of Sergeant, the timing is peculiar and has likely contributed to many of the rumours that T. Roy may have well been the shooter, given particularly that the shooter apparently appeared smaller than the average adult. But another factor pointing towards Oblock being responsible is the fact that this shooting took place only a few weeks after the murder of Jay Money, who was one of their most beloved members. And the fact that one of the people who was allegedly present when Jay Money was killed was the infamous female assassin K.I. from STL, who would even tweet afterwards about how someone had just tried to kill her but missed. With it being plausible that this indeed could have been T. Roy shooting at K.I. and ultimately killing an innocent bystander standard in the process. Moreover, it seems that Oblock may well have been hunting K.I. again a few months later, because on the 1st of November, a 32-year-old woman was shot in the leg as she walked in the 6300 block of South Vernon Avenue, the territory of STL, around 12.23pm. Shortly before 2pm, FBG Dutchie would tweet how Oblock had come through shooting again, but had shot an innocent junkie. And then the next day, K.I. would tweet saying that Oblock had tried to shoot her, but missed, hitting someone else. And then a few weeks later, Dutchie would specify that that shooting had indeed happened on Vernon. Then, some months later, K.I. would even tweet, threatening T. Roy, saying that if he came to Vernon, he would end up dead. Ultimately, K.I. would end up being killed herself, with the prime suspect being King Von. However, before that would happen, there would be one more murder which T. Roy and Von were rumoured to have been involved in, or at least present for. Twenty fourteen would start bad for T. Roy because on the 9th of January he was arrested on a warrant, likely due to being out on bond after the previous legal problems that he had already racked up. However, about a month later, T. Roy would be released, and not just him, but also his right hand man, King Von, with Boss Top welcoming both home in mid February. But at the same time, sending a warning to all of their ops, the Oblock's top shooters were back in the South Side streets. And the ops had reasons to be fearful, because only a little over a week after the murder of the innocent man Billy Sargent in September 2013, the Oblock and 600 Alliance had lost one of their biggest rappers L.A. Capone, who was murdered on the 26th of September by members of 051 Young Money. At the death of L.A. Capone, who is still considered to be one of the most charismatic <laughs> artists to have ever come out of the Chicago drill scene, hit 600 and O Block equally hard. Together with the murder of Jay Money earlier that month, the O Block 600 alliance was thirsty for revenge, and that's exactly what they would get in 2014, nah, because in March, 051 Young Money's biggest- It is death made me tune into the drill music. Sure. Rapper Lil Mark, real name Mark Campbell, would put out a scathing diss track aimed at Oblock, 600, Lamron, and all of the other Black Disciple sets who had formed an alliance in the Chicago streets. This diss song was called No Competition, and it was named after Lil Durk and Lil Reese's diss song against the Ops called Competition. In the song, Lil Mark would diss numerous Oblock, 600, and other members from the alliance, and the music video would even include a clip of Lil Mark being on FaceTime with Lil Reese, making it clear that there was a deep animosity between these two. But y'all on. God. That hell shit. Uh huh. What's up, boy? What up? Out here. I'm on fast, boy. I've been out here. I stay out here, boy. The song itself made Lil Mark the prime target for the O Block 600 Alliance to get revenge. And on the 28th of March, only a few days after the No Competition music video was posted to YouTube, Lil Mark was standing at a bus stop on the 300 stop of East 51st Street, which, despite the street number, was about a mile away from 051's hood 
on the opposite side of Washington Park. While at the bus stop, a silver van would pull up and somebody would hop out, opening fire, hitting Little Mark in the head and killing him on the spot, with graphic images of Little Mark laying on the ground at the bus stop circulating on social media in the following days. One witness would describe to the police how the shooter had an extended clip, but they were unable to see their face. Several hours later, the police would find the van used in the shooting about two and a half miles away in the low end area, but the van, which had Florida plates, was engulfed in flames. Once again, immediately after Little Mark's death, while 051 members were paying homage to him, such as their most feared shooter 051 Melly, who would seemingly jump in the streets looking for revenge as soon as he heard about Mark's passing. Meanwhile, Von, T Roy, and other O Block 600 members would begin dissing him relentlessly and insinuating their involvement. 051 were a violent set with a lot of enemies, and people from O Block 600 and THF were all celebrating the tragic Little news. Mark However, have, even uh, beyond the celebration, like, look at this. Seemingly showing King Von, T Roy, and D Rose from 600 together in a car driving past Little Mark's death scene, all while police were still combing the evidence. Hey, so took off 51st! Damn, body down. Oh, body down, 51st. Gang. Little Mark would become one of the most dis ops amongst the O Block Alliance for years to come. I'm tired of smoking. Took us so you know this one I'm gonna be smoking that. It's called Lil Mark. I'm right here kicking a Lil Mark dirty ass. Dang, Marky. That's a piece of my ass face, man. Marky. I'm gonna go sleep in the studio. Meanwhile, members of 051 would insinuate that O-Block may well have been behind Lil Mark's murder, like the rapper Driller, who tweeted that he would kill the whole of O-Block just to bring Mark back. Unsurprisingly, people like Von, T-Roy, THF Twiller, and D-Rose would become the main suspects among Chicago Drill fans. But officially, the investigation would seemingly move nowhere, and it still remains an open case to this day. But what makes the death of Lil Mark particularly sad and mind-boggling is the fact that he had seemingly been almost gotten by the very same people only days before his death, with people like Von and Twiller seemingly tweeting about having nearly caught Lil Mark just days before the murder. Ultimately, however, as the years went on, T-Roy and King Von would have less opportunities to kill, and having already caused so much pain in the streets, it was only a matter of time before T-Roy himself would ultimately be caught lacking, in the end suffering the very same fate that he had Subjected his rivals to so many times before. I mean, it was. Later, bro, we halfway through the video, bro. In 2014, the deathly trio, Von, T Roy, and D Rose, would all get locked up again on different occasions. But while T Roy would eventually be back on the streets for a period of time in 2014, this wouldn't be the case for Von, who would get charged for the murder of Malcolm Stuckey in July, only months after allegedly killing female shooter KI, with Von remaining in jail and fighting the Malcolm Stuckey murder case for several years until the end of 2017. Von would end up beating those charges, but D Rose wouldn't be so lucky, as he would not only be charged for the murder of Venzel Richardson in April, but eventually he would be found guilty for that murder, being sentenced to a monster bid of 40 years in jail. Perhaps it was the fate of these two that would make T Roy calm down a little bit, because after the murder of Lil Mark, there wouldn't be any more bodies that have commonly been pinned on him in online rumours. Unfortunately, the next now murder associated say, with his on. name. Everyone say D Rose ain't do a thing, but that being said, just like how uh, Whiskey Brother got out, no one appealed, did all nine right. Let's say the same shit happened for D Rose. What you think he he he, he getting out on some rapping shit? That down back when he was on shit or what? What you what y'all think? Because the, the if it's true of him not doing it, the likelihood of him getting out is high, I believe. And let's say somebody in this video did it that's no longer here. Chances go up. You know what I mean? would be the murder of T-Roy himself. In 2015, T-Roy would be arrested and charged with unlawful use of a weapon, among other charges, and he would reportedly spend over a year in jail. And at the end of 2016, Oblock would suffer another major loss when one of their most respected members, Big A, was shot and killed in a restaurant near Oblock. Perhaps it was the murder of Big A, who was a close friend of T-Roy, that would make T-Roy get active in the streets again. Or perhaps, more likely, we simply will never know all of the dirt that T-Roy was doing in the streets by himself, rolling solo, while his right-hand man, King Von, was fighting his murder case. But whatever the case, only a few months after the death of Big A, on the 14th of February 2017, T-Roy would be lurking again, this time in the South Shore neighborhood on the east side. More specifically, on East 71st Street. The rumor being that T-Roy was looking for an op called TB, or Terry Barry, who belonged to the rival set Taekwon World from the West Woodlawn neighborhood. TB was known to hang out at that location and even had pictures of himself in front of the stores there. 
There were even rumours that T-Roy had actually upped his gun or even shot at TB and his friends earlier that very day, particularly after a member of Taekwon World called Two Times would put out a remix of King Von's song Crazy Story, with many arguing that he's actually describing the events of that day. Whatever the case, from the now available security camera footage, we can see that around 11.50am, T-Roy would enter a grocery store on 71st Street, together with another person who he had apparently met just moments earlier. Interestingly, this person would later tell the police that T-Roy had told him about an encounter that he had on that street earlier on, with someone apparently asking T-Roy, what are you about? Only a few minutes later, two men would approach the store from the same direction, but it's with like, one of them- We always can tell this nigga ain't new to this shit. Alright, cool. He out roaming around looking for somebody, actively hunting. Why you got a ski mask up? Why you got a ski mask up? Okay, say the situation did happen moments earlier. Shit, failed mission. Why you ain't leave? It's just so many things I see, and it's like, y'all sure that's what he was doing? You know what I mean? Stopping to tie his shoelaces, as if knowing that he would soon have to go on the run. Meanwhile, in the store, T-Roy is walking around and talking with his friend in a cold storage aisle, unaware that these two men are lurking outside the store. Finally, those two men would enter the store, walking directly to T-Roy and his friend, with the first man seemingly acting as a diversion, preventing T-Roy from noticing that the second man was approaching with a gun. That second man would then pull the gun out, shooting T-Roy once in the chest, before both men run out of the store and escape the way they came from. Meanwhile, T-Roy crawls behind the clerk's counter while throwing his own gun under one of the shelves, whilst his friend seemingly runs out of the store. The friend would then return and attempt to help T-Roy together with the store clerk, but for several minutes, T-Roy can be seen laying on the floor alone without anyone doing any of the basic first aid measures, such as applying pressure to the wound or attempting to keep him awake that might have saved him. Finally, police and emergency <laughs> services arrive to the scene and begin helping T-Roy, while the store clerk begins to explain to the police what had happened. And eventually, T-Roy is carried out of the store and taken to a hospital, where he would unfortunately pass away. Soon, the news of T-Roy's passing would reach the other members of the O-Block Alliance, and members would be devastated, especially King Von, who would be crushed by the news while still in jail fighting his case. And Von would later explain breaking down on that day when he first heard the news of T-Roy's demise. You know, I mean, I'm gonna figure this shit out. It'd be cool without the... I call folks, I call folks. It's like, that's not like Valentine's Day, you see what I'm saying? I call folks, I'm calling, I call, I call. Now, I call my mom, I call my mom. My mama call. Uh, nah, 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 nah. Now, we, now we try to call T-Roy, she ain't answer. They would check out T-Roy here, huh? Um, I went, 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 went. Nah, 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 ah. But I look. All right, all right, I got to call somebody. I probably call a hoe or something. I call a Zarya, so I call a bitch or something. I call a hoe. Then, wham, I call my mama back. Now, she crying and shit. Mama, what the fuck what you crying for? You good? You know what I'm saying? She, ooh, they shot T-Roy. T-Roy got, now what? Who? What? Oh, look at the phone. You know how that shit go? You in jail? You can tell. Hold on. What? Ah, all right. Huh. Now we call him. We call him. We call him. We call him. Right? What's going on? What's going on? He got hit. He got hit. He got hit once. I'm sure. Oh, damn, 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 damn. What the fuck going on out there? I'm T-Roy. got shot. Look, look. This is the thing. Y'all don't know T-Roy. Y'all got to leave out history of T-Roy. Y'all don't know. Uh, T-Roy got to go for the... That's T-Roy. <laughs> T-Roy, that's T-Roy, oh, oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't know T-Roy like I know T-Roy, you know what I'm saying? So, so, so when I hear he gets shot on, so he, he don't want to talk me like, don't be lacking, oh, don't be, oh, don't be, you know? He was telling me he used to be on, he used to be on each other, you know what I'm saying? Cause me and him, we back to back with my boy, you know what I'm saying? Folks got shot, I said, hold on. I said, the streets, hold on. Who got shot, who? Nah, my, he a gangster. He got shot before. He a gangster. And the folks ain't make it on front of my house. I play it out, you know me. You know you gotta play it out. You in jail, that's all type of goof asses around. You know these dirty people. All of your business on King Day, but I walk it off. I walk it off. I let it sit in. Oh, mm -hmm. Now my homie from out west, I fuck with that west Willie D and them and on Junior on front of them. I fuck with them. It's hard on King Day. It's the same gang. Now they see me, they, I'm just walking around in circles on the deck, you know. And they put their arm around me. When I'm like, damn, you good, bro, bro, you good? What's wrong with you, Vano? Yeah, I'm good. Ooh, they, what's wrong? You got a problem, man. I'm, I'm good, you know? They, what happened? I mean, they, they just killed T-Roy. Ooh, he what? They, I'm T-Roy. They just, they just killed T-Roy. Oh, I got to break it down on King David. 
I couldn't help it. They, they hug. This is a hug. I mean, these some real n****s. You know what I'm We grown ass men. Both grab me to hold me. Get to bed. You gonna be all right, sweaty. You gonna be all right. Oh, hold on. Boy, that's my best friend, boy. Somebody just killed my best friend while I'm in jail. I'm in that bitch for to go crazy. Oh, I'm in that bitch. Don't know what's going on. I'm in that bitch in that. Who the fuck is y'all? I'm in that bitch mad. On. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm in that bitch in that. Nah, not nah, my best friend. You know what I'm saying? T-Roy's old friend Chief Keith would also tweet about him paying homage on Twitter following his passing. Although he had been estranged from many of his old O Block friends due to events that had taken place years earlier, while Keith was still living in Chicago, it where O Block veteran the... Boss Top was accused of robbing. Um, all the tweets and shit that, that went out that day. Um, that was what, that was one of the reasons why um, Chirac Legends was like, "Boy, it's about to go crazy." To help add it to his point and shit. Hell yeah. Robbing Keith's house. The fact that Keith still played homage to T Roy, in spite of everything that had gone on with O Block, just showed how much of an impact T Roy had had on Keith, the true pioneer of Chicago drill music. Meanwhile, following the murder, T Roy's enemies would be reacting with glee, including FBG Duck, who would react to T Roy's death live on Instagram in what many have considered to have been a fake reaction, with the rumour being that Duck's brother, FBG Brick, who can actually be heard speaking in the background of this video, had in fact been the person who gave T Roy's location to his killers. I'm on live, G. Shut the f up. Before you even get it, I, I just, it just came on. But still, then it's Instagram. It deleted instantly. It just came on. But damn, G. I'm on star. Shit, they got every word that nigga said. To this bill. Damn, they on here talking about what you think about T. Roy dying. Shit, that shit ain't even funny. Shit, I'm not even gonna lie. Shit, that shit ain't even funny. 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 When T. Roy get popped? Damn, somebody popped him. Is he dead? Is he dead? Did, did he die? Damn, merch that they popped T. Roy. It must don't be, it ain't, it must ain't that important shit. It ain't all over the internet. I ain't seen it. He must not be dead. Surprisingly, even with all of the high quality he the sarcastic in that nigga voice. security camera footage sarcastic. that the police had, they would ultimately struggle to find the identities of the killers for years. Until finally, in the fall of 2018, they would have a breakthrough after a member of the gang investigations unit made a positive identification on both men. They would recognize the shooter as Terry Barry, better known as TB, the very man that T-Roy had allegedly been hunting on the day of his death, while his accomplice would allegedly be identified as DeAndre Wallace, better known as Tukerville Man Man, or Get Right. However, by this point, it was already too late, because both men had already died, falling victims to gun violence, just like T-Roy. Their death so soon after the murder of T-Roy would make many convinced that their deaths were directly related to T-Roy's murder, as seemingly foretold by the ominous tweet by Booker 600 after T-Roy's death, but more about this later. After still frames and videos from the security cameras would become available publicly, revealing the killer's clothing, the internet sleuths would quickly recognize what was really going on. It would turn out that these were the very same clothes that TB and Man Man had worn in pictures posted on their social media earlier that same month. They would also dig up an old tweet from TB in 2015 where he would seemingly predict T-Roy's death by his own hand, as well as creepy posts from T-Roy's Twitter account that TB had retweeted after killing him. The murder of T-Roy by Terry Barry was brutal, but it was nothing compared to what would transpire over the rest of the year. Ultimately, T-Roy was one of Oblock's most fierce shooters and savages who was ready to kill at a moment's notice. He was feared in the streets and beloved by his own gang, but ultimately despite his reputation, his days were truly numbered and it would only be a matter of time before his enemies caught up with him in the same way that he had caught up with them. Following the death of T-Roy, remaining members of O Block formed a new- Nigga, I seen this uh, YouTube short. The nigga Butter was calling this nigga Yugi, the Yu-Gi-Oh player? The Yu-Gi-Oh player? I might have to find that clip. But I guess he wasn't knowing what, 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 what TV was doing. I guess he was in jail or something. But hell yeah, he called, he called him a Yu-Gi-Oh player. I just got a cool little, little chuckle out of it. I was like, damn. Hey, they in the comments talking about, yeah, he had the, the blue eyes white dragon on him. Um, 
Y'all need to stop, man. <laughs> Hugh Group called he to get back the at blue eyes. Eyes. who waged a brutal yeah. revenge campaign in T-Roy's name. Their primary goal was to get back for T-Roy, murdering his killers or Hold on, I gotta check the audio. Ah. Anyone that had something to do with his death. Following T-Roy's murder, numerous people from the other side would lose their lives in quick succession, making 2017 one of the deadliest years in O-Block history. Many high-profile homicides would play out in the months that followed, starting on May the 15th, 2017, when Warren Delton, aka Lil Ho from Jaro City, was gunned down. Lil Ho was just 44 at the time and was believed to be the uncle of 600 Breezy. On the afternoon of the 15th of May, several rounds were fired in the 6100 block of South Eberhart. Warren Delton was found lying on the pavement, victim to several deadly gunshot wounds. Lil Ho was shot multiple times in his head, was ultimately pronounced dead at the scene. This murder would be the first victim of the Get Back Gang killings with O-Block being responsible and rumours that 600 members were also present too. Despite the possible family connection between Lil Ho and one of 600's most well-known members, 600 Breezy, Lil Ho was known to be a moneymaker in the area and due to his age, it's unlikely that he was even involved in this war at all, but simply being from Jaro City had made him a target of Get Back Gang. Just months ago, Reddit Shy Recologist had even released new information on. about the incident that had been uncovered through the Freedom of Information Act, with a new document revealing that there were in fact four shooters present at the scene, with one of them standing over Lil Ho when killing him. It was clear that Get Back Gang was aiming to kill multiple rivals for T-Roy. Commenters on Reddit would later share how at this time, this murder was seen as a warning that a storm was coming. Redditors have since mentioned the dark reality behind this murder, specifically within Oblox's close ally 600, as even after Lil Ho's murder, 600 Breezy had been pictured with McAdoo, one of the alleged shooters who had killed his uncle Lil Ho, with some people even commenting how crazy it would be that your day one homie kills your uncle, but you don't care because you put your gang over your family. But Get Back Gang was only just getting started, and seven days later, they would strike again, this time against their GD rivals, MOB. At around 8pm on the 22nd of May, 27-year-old MOB affiliate Jamo, real name Jamie Jones, was driving near 59th Street in LaSalle in the Washington Park neighborhood, when a car pulled up alongside him and shot Jamo in the chest, back and arm, before turning southbound on Yale Avenue and fleeing the scene. Jamo was taken to a hospital where he was later pronounced dead at 11.55pm. Another recently released police report shows that Jamo exited the car after getting shot, possibly to get help, but ultimately he would collapse in the street whilst his car would remain in motion, eventually crashing. Dooski from MOB would pay his respects to Jamo after hearing about his death, which would prompt Mimo 600 to like the post, a yeah. creepy but common tactic used by gang members to taunt their ops during this time of grief. Shockingly, similar to how Lil Ho was actually the uncle of 600 Breezy, Jamo was allegedly the brother of two Front Street members, a set which has also been very close with both Oblock and 600, with this being yet another reminder that in Chicago, your own family members may be killed by your friends if they get on the wrong side of the gang war. There's many theories speculating about exactly who was involved in this murder, with the majority seeming to believe that it was McAdoo from 600 involved in this hit, essentially pinning two murders on him within just a week, with another main suspect being Catfuck12 from 600 and T-Roy's brother Heck, aka HK from Oblock. Get Back Gang had now allegedly killed two ops in seven days, all in retaliation to T-Roy's murder. However, the gang that was most likely directly responsible for T-Roy's murder, Taekwon World, had not yet faced any direct consequences but Oblock clearly had no plans on stopping the getbacks, with members like Edog tweeting that more getbacks would be coming that very summer. And indeed, the next <laughs> month, Get Back Gang would allegedly strike again in yet another brutal murder, with T-Roy's brother Heck allegedly beginning his own spree of vengeance, earning himself a fearsome reputation in the Chicago streets, just like his late brother, as well as a new nickname that would warn anyone who crossed him just how deadly he was on the streets. Poppy was the right-hand man of TB, or Terry Barry, the man who had seemingly shot and killed T-Roy, and the two were even seen together in multiple photos, even collaborating on music, earning them their most popular song, Taekwon Way, a tribute to their gang set, Taekwon World. Poppy was just 18 years old, and much like many other teens song. at his age, he worked a normal day job. Now I know a little, the, 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 now I just, you know, goddamn, I can listen to the song a little differently, with different ears and shit. And I did that, did that video like, I want to say 2018. Yeah, I want to say 2018. At a local business to make ends meet. On the 16th of June, Poppy was working his shift as normal at the LP Candy Warehouse, which was located on the 7047 block of South State Street in the Greater Grand Crossing neighborhood, just a few miles away from the main war zone around the Woodlawn and Washington Park neighborhoods. 
At around 3pm, Poppy had been helping an elderly female customer take her shopping back to her car, whilst he was literally at work helping a customer, a maroon coloured vehicle would pull into the parking lot, and a masked man would exit the vehicle and begin firing an AK-47 style automatic rifle towards Poppy, striking him three times in the head, once in the lower body, once in his back, and once in his right upper arm. First ticket's coming in at 7-5 in state, says mail shot inside the candy warehouse. White car did a U-turn to go westbound on 7-1, possibly back on the expressway, unknown if that car is involved. One car was out two male legs on the ground, shooting near white sedan parked at the candy store. Male black six foot with dreads and a white t-shirt and jeans. Per 7383 Adam, offenders jumped out of a maroon car and fired the shots, got back in the car and went northbound. We got multiple shell cases out here. Another ticket says that a male black wearing a white mask took off in a car. Didn't remember the color. Last thing getting on the expressway. Maroon vehicle, last thing North Island State with the male black shooter. From the victim to uh, County uh, Hospital, Ember 65 is taking another one. I got the female. This is a color four door vehicle. The passenger jumped out of the vehicle. Shot the victim in close range. The victim worked at this uh, candy store. Is that the male or the female? The female is not shot. She just fell. She's not shot. We know we have a male with a gunshot wound to the head, unknown condition, ambulance 14 to Stroger, an unknown name. The victim's last name, Ryan, date of birth, 04 June 99, uh, male black, uh, critical condition for now. It's believed that this despicable act of violence is when Heck, short for his real name Hakeem Murray, got his new nickname, HK, which allegedly stood for Headshot King. Poppy was ultimately taken to the Stroger Hospital where he was unfortunately pronounced dead around six hours later. But to make matters even worse, the horrific aftermath of the shooting was recorded and is actually still circulating online, but it's far too graphic to show you here. In the clip, Poppy's almost lifeless body could be seen clinging on in his final moment, but it's far too graphic to show you here. In the clip, Poppy's almost lifeless body could be seen clinging on in his final moments, whilst distraught members of the public can be seen around him, frantically attempting to give first aid and help him pull through. Meanwhile, the woman who Poppy had been helping put things in her car before the shooting could be seen laying on the floor, screaming in shock, and according to reports, she would remain laid out on the floor until the police arrived. Come on, Trayvon! Dang, he gone. This crazy as hell, bro. What she been shot at? Nah, she was traumatized. That's why she went on that ground. She was traumatized. Trey. saying hello they told him three times the fuck what, what do y'all do nigga come on i don't got time to sit right here and take it but they ain't just standing around Nobody to fucking help. They don't want nobody to help whatsoever. But you just gonna stand around looking stupid. Like you sucking your thumb. That would've looked like. But you probably was doing some other shit. Whatever. Yeah. 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 
of innocent people moments was on that day furthermore the day off from that personal and the kill in their way police arrived his almost lifeless body could be seen clinging on in his final moments whilst distraught members of the public can be seen around him frantically attempting to give first aid and help him pull through meanwhile the woman who poppy had been helping put things in her car before the shooting could be seen laying on the floor screaming in shock and according to reports, she would remain laid out on the floor until the police arrived. This goes to show you just how brutal and senseless the violence can get in these gang wars, with members having zero sympathy or consideration to the life-changing trauma that they're putting dozens of innocent people in on top of the actual murders themselves. Unfortunately, this murder was very personal, and the killers from Oblock didn't seem to care who got in their way. Poppy was indeed affiliated with the gang and the person who had murdered T-Roy, and he had been rumored to have killed at least one person to himself. Now it's unknown exactly who was inside the maroon vehicle as no arrests have been made for this murder and it would turn out that that store was located right next to a freeway essentially giving the shooter a perfect chance to escape the area instantly after the hit however in a true Chirac fashion the alleged perpetrators including hk who was the alleged shooter would begin hinting at their involvement almost immediately heck would begin to be referred to as hk or headshot king an apparent badge of honor based on his accuracy with the gun that day furthermore the day after poppy's murder hk was seen flaunting a chain of his brig brother t-roy something that members are known to do when they have avenged the said person on their chain Further insults and taunting from Oblock members would implicate HK as the shooter, such as Melly from Oblock visiting the candy store and shouting out HK, together with a post that reads, if you know, heck dat savage. There are also other Oblock members who have been rumored to have been involved. For example, in the days following Poppy's murder, E-Dog would tweet comparing killing to the feeling of sex, a trend seemingly made popular by C-Day from 600 in a brazen tweet he put out years earlier. However, on the other side of the war, after news spread about Poppy's death, TB would share on Twitter that he was devastated. The two had been extremely close, and it would later circulate that following Poppy's murder, TB would suffer mentally, allegedly checking into a mental health facility twice during this period, with this seemingly confirmed by a later article by one of his teachers. Killing such a close friend to TB and a beloved member of Taekwon World, Get Back Gang were getting closer and closer to the person responsible for T-Roy's death, but they were not done killing, and it still seemed like anybody could get it. Then, just 12 days later, Get Back Gang would continue their murder spree, this time killing a female affiliate to MOB and an innocent woman. White girl, real name Janine Dowell, who also went by Janine Charrell, was a 32-year-old woman living in the MOB neighborhood. Many internet theories have pinned her as a set-up chick, however there's no evidence that I've found to support this. In reality, she was a mother of three, and nicknamed Miss Make It Happen due to her dedication to grant her family their wishes. Unfortunately, it would seem her proximity to Oblock's enemies would make her a target for Get Back Gang too. On the 28th of June, Janine was driving in an SUV with another woman named Juliet Washington in the Washington Park neighborhood. As they approached a red traffic light and stopped, two shooters would approach the vehicle, pulling up beside them and shooting into the car, hitting both victims multiple times. As the SUV rolled into the sidewalk, both shooters ran back to their car and fled. The news would report the two women in the car as deceased, and heartbreaking pictures would be taken at the crime scene as people learned the tragic news and had to be held back by police. After the murder, Washington's auntie was interviewed at the scene, with her appearing completely shocked as to why someone would kill her niece who was not affiliated with anything gang related and rarely even visited the city. Sadly, it appeared that Juliet was simply collateral damage, with the real target likely being white girl due to her affiliations with people from her neighborhood. Eventually, McAdoo from 600 and Lil Scud from Oblock would be arrested and charged for this double murder. Prosecutors alleged that it was around 10.30 p.m. when McAdoo and Lil Scud pulled up in a stolen gray sedan behind Washington's stopped SUV at Warbush Avenue and Garfield Boulevard, with this being in the heart of MOB's hood. They then got out the car, approached the SUV on foot with handguns, and carried out the extremely brutal double murder, firing almost two dozen rounds in approximately 15 seconds. 
Clearly, they wanted to make sure that White Girl didn't survive. One of the alleged motives for this gruesome murder is that White Girl was looking to cooperate in a battery case against somebody allied to 600, and thus it was believed that McAdoo and Lil Scud were supposedly paid to do this hit. This is supported by the fact that McAdoo reportedly made 15 calls to the person from the case in the hours before and after the murder. In just two months, McAdoo had been implicated in three murders, and now his life as a free man had finally come to an end. Meanwhile, MOB were left mortified by this situation. Jamo and White Girl had been killed by Get Back Gang in retaliation for a murder they didn't even commit. White Girl's murder was referenced on the track Street To Me by Lil Mo, Six Blocker and Ruger, where they rap, can't believe they killed Janine, that was a whole girl. Whether White Girl's murder is seen as part of the Get Back of T-Roy or just a paid hit is irrelevant. She was the fourth murder within two months carried out by the same group. With McAdoo being involved in the first two, this is clearly a continuation of the gang's relentless murder spree, which had now seemingly broadened to contract killings. And sadly, they would not stop there. The next month, Get Back Gang, or so-called OB600, named after the two sets O Block and 600, who had become increasingly tight during their recent violent escapades, would commit another double murder, catching two family members of FBG Duck on the very same night. Kobe Mack, who was from Taekwon World, is the cousin of infamous rapper from 63rd and St. Lawrence, FBG Duck, while FBG Brick is Duck's big brother. A lot of don't understand, like, everybody think Duck, like, y'all most know Duck, but anybody that really know Duck, know me, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And I ain't get my name off rapping, you know what I'm saying? Just something I always had a passion for, you know what I'm saying? I started doing it, but that ain't where I got my name from. Okay, you know I'm saying I guess by Duck getting his name for Rabbit being over famous and shit. But for see me and like all oh, this Duck brother, but the most that really know, you know what I'm saying, know what, what I be on and shit. And that's my little brother. You know what I'm saying? The little brother. The little brother, you know, my big little brother. That's what's <laughs> you know up what there. Brick 2 was very close with Taekwon World and was often seen with Terry Barry and other members in his music videos. It's even theorized that Brick may have been the very person who actually gave TB T-Roy's location before he was killed. And fans believe this is actually why Brick was seen pictured with TB and Get Right around that time when those two were wearing the same clothes that they wore in the surveillance footage on the hit. The day after T-Roy was killed, Brick was heard in the back of FBG Ducks Live stating how proud he was of Taekwon World that they had killed T-Roy. Duck would swiftly tell him to be quiet as he's on live before going on to pretend that he was just finding out that T-Roy is dead that moment from his chat. I'm on live, G. Shut the f*** up. Before you even get it. I, I just, it just came on. But still, get his Instagram. It deleted instantly, G. You knew what he was talking about before you cut that live. It just came on. In the midst of Get Back Gang's murders, Kobe and Brick chose not to stay low-key. On July the 17th, a block party was thrown in STL EBT territory on the 6300 block of St. Lawrence, where the duo was in attendance. Whilst Brick and Kobe were in the porch area of the house, a white SUV pulled up and a person hopped out, approaching Kobe before shooting him multiple times. Brick was then chased in the alleyway next to the house, where he too was also shot several times, and both would end up losing their lives at the scene, with Brick supposedly being left on top of a fence that he had tried to jump over in an attempt to escape. Furthermore, graphic images of Kobe's corpse lying on the grass were also revealed to the public in news articles which covered the murder. On top of that, a viral photo also circulated which depicted FBG Duck and his mother, Mama Duck, mourning the loss at the scene. And recordings of the aftermath were also released where Mama Duck can be heard screaming and crying with her chilling outpouring of grief echoing all throughout the neighborhood. <laughs> Mama Duck has since given more insight into how the double murder played out in numerous interviews. According to her, one car was waiting in front of the house where Kobe was, whilst another car came behind the house, the direction where Brick was attempting to escape through the gangway. This all appeared to be a planned ambush, almost as if they knew that Brick would run that way. From witnesses and people who have told me that um, supposed to have been a car waiting in the back behind where they were standing, and then a car came up the one way, and they instantly shot Kobe, and Brick tried to run and jump a gate um, and was shot in the back. Um, and he was also, I'm assuming the way his autopsy report was that as he was running towards the back, somebody was back there waiting on him. So I wasn't aware that he was shot in his face until I got his op, until I went to 
identify him. The autopsy report would show just how gruesome and violent these murders were, with Brick shot six times and Kobe nine times. Now many suspect that HK, Cap, McAdoo, Trey Five, and C Murder were the ones responsible for planning this hit, with Redditors saying that this was almost confirmed. Some years later, C Murder would apparently be identified as the shooter of Brick in articles that detailed legal paperwork that had circulated after he was charged with the murder of FBT Duck. Brick's mother also believed that Cap was involved and even commented on a post claiming that he was implicated in killing Brick. Cap and Brick actually had a history of back and forth on Twitter just a month before this, where Brick can be seen insulting Cap and claiming that C Day has no respect for Cap. Brick may have actually been telling the truth, as C Day famously said that the op should have killed Cap instead of Trix, which according to some rumours was due to a love triangle. Although the tweet could have likely just been C Day's way of hinting that Cap was the one who had been hurting the ops the most, but in 2019, Cap would tweet again, disrespecting <coughs> Duck and Brick. But Brick was not innocent in this war, and Mama Duck would later say in a live stream how people didn't even know the half of what he had actually done in the streets. I ain't finna sit here and act like motherfucker tell me somebody you act like Duck was innocent. He the f was <laughs> compared to Brick. Y'all don't even know the motherfucker half, okay? Just days before his murder, Brick was also antagonizing his ops on Twitter, even calling them out for not engaging in shootouts and claiming that he was ready to walk through O-Block. However, like so often in gang life, they weren't always enemies, and one chilling photo from many years ago would actually show FBG Brick at a youth center alongside none other than McAdoo, one of the main killers in this spree of murders, who is also rumored to have possibly been the person who killed Brick. And just like with Cap, Brick had also had a history of escalating tension with McAdoo, claiming that after he had gotten shot in a previous incident, he choked McAdoo after Inky D and C Day ran from him. Clearly this was personal, but it was also another revenge murder in the name of T-Roy. And by this point, Get Back Gang had murdered seven people from May to July 2017, only months after T-Roy's murder. However, one man was still at the top of their hit list, the man responsible for pulling the trigger and killing T-Roy. And just two months later, Get Back Gang would ultimately find exactly who they were looking for. With his right-hand man Poppy and FBG Brick being murdered just months earlier, TB should have seen the warning signs that he was not safe in Chicago. Likely he did, but he simply couldn't leave the streets alone after having lost so many of his best friends. TB had in fact made himself a target by bragging about about his crimes on the internet and even choosing to taunt Oblock and Get Back Gang by claiming they will never get back. A brave post considering they had already killed two people at this point. As TB chose not to relocate in this war, sadly, eventually, it would end up catching up with him. At this point, Get Back Gang was truly looking for TB and HK was even seen on Gyro City Skinny's Instagram Live asking for his location. HK could also be seen on social media sliding and looking for TB with the other members. Then, on the 23rd of September, E-Dog would ominously post to Twitter saying that Get Back Gang was on the way, telling his fans, just watch what was about to happen. And on the morning of the 26th, TB shared to Facebook that he was feeling blessed, a truly chilling post considering what would come next. Allegedly, Get Back Gang members had spent days trying to get TB's location, and much later, Lil D would even share the messages from the moment when HK seemingly found TB's location in a very incriminating post that apparently preceded the murder. At 12.45 p.m., TB was with a man called Side from Jaro City on the 7000 block of South Chapel Avenue, when someone would pull up, shooting the pair multiple times. Side was struck in the head, but thankfully survived the incident, but unfortunately TB would be less lucky. A rumor would even later circulate that upon being caught by his enemies, TB would actually smile at his attackers and say, you got me. With this very dramatic scenario being heavily disputed by followers of the Chicago drill scene, as well as individuals close to the incident. We'll probably never know exactly what was going through TB's head at that exact moment, but what we do know for certain is that TB, real name Terry Barry, was also shot in the head and later pronounced dead at Northwestern Hospital, just age 21. But a crazy coincidence is just how similar the headlines were about the murders of T. Roy and TB. Maybe the person writing these articles had a sense of irony, or perhaps more likely, it simply shows just how much the gang lifestyle ultimately ends up repeating and it's itself. The, same person the police wrote reports it. would later show just how brutal this murder was, with the autopsy showing how TB was shot so many times it was likely an entire magazine was emptied into him, and that in the police scanner audio, it was even said that they believed the shooters reloaded their <coughs> guns and shot again. It's rumored that the gunmen were HK and McAdoo, with this tying a whopping seven murders to him just in 2017 alone. The police dispatch would also spot the black vehicle that the shooter drove away in. Be advised, uh, the victim on the porch 
is extremely, extremely critical. Border of black car slipped on Chappelle going the wrong way. With them claiming that one of the shooters had a light complexion, which likely may have fit McAdoo's description. Uh, two males, one light complexion wearing a mask. Indeed, the next day the duo were clearly in high spirits as they would pose together for pictures. And if these rumors are true, HK single-handedly avenged his brother T-Roy after this series of back-to-back -back murders following T-Roy's death. Meanwhile, TB's friends like FBG Duck would be devastated and mourn his death. In just a few months, two of their most notable members, TB and Poppy, were killed at the hands of Get Back Gang. TB's mother would also post a heartbreaking thread to Twitter reacting to his death and TB's school teacher would even post a moving article where he explained his hurt at hearing the news of his former students TB and Poppy's death, with his mother also posting her own emotional tribute to her son in the comments of that article, also calling out hateful and disrespectful comments about her son from rivals. However, unfortunately, others would lurk in the same comments, suggesting that TB himself had allegedly murdered four people, including T-Roy. TB's friends, on the other hand, would begin paying tribute to him, publicly naming him as the T-Roy Slayer and celebrating the murder that had originally caused these Mr. brutal back-to-back -back killings. The extreme wave of violence that followed T-Roy's death is unheard of, even in the extremely violent reality of Chicago's gang wars. Numerous murders in broad daylight all over the span of a few months. After killing TB, O-Block was seemingly not done, and unsurprisingly, they would continue bragging to the whole world. Boss Top would make several tweets poking fun at TB's death, claiming that TB had begged for his life in a reply to one of his tweets, as well as numerous other posts seemingly disputing the version of events where TB had been rumored to have smiled at his shooters before they got him. E-Dog from Oblock would also join in on the taunting just a day after TB's murder, posting a basketballer scoring and saying rest in peace to T-Roy. Years later, Oblock rapper Moo-Wop would diss TB extensively, saying that he's smoking on Terry Barry in his song Spin It. However, before the year would end, the cycle of violence was not finished, as HK himself would tragically lose his life to a completely separate situation in the very place he would have thought he was the most safe. The 24th of November 2017 was a day like any other in Oblock, with HK hanging out in Parkway Gardens accompanied by Lil D and McAdoo. In the CCTV footage released from the incident, we can see the trio enter the 6436 tower block inside of Parkway Gardens. Footage would later emerge giving more context to the events that played out that day. HK and McAdoo he proceeded upstairs where they saw a man who wasn't from Oblock. Allegedly, he was just visiting somebody that he knew inside Parkway Gardens. The man was wearing gold chains, so HK and McAdoo allegedly attempted to confront and rob the man. It's possible that they didn't think this guy would fight back against such hardened and feared members affiliated with Oblock and Get Back Gang, but this turned out to be a big misjudgment. The man noticed a gun in one of their jacket pockets and would run away into one of the apartment units, closing the door after him. After HK tried to get in, the man then upped his legal firearm after yelling that he doesn't gangbang, opening fire on HK. HK was hit two times, once in the thigh, once in the abdomen. They would then retreat down the stairwell while McAdoo was blindly shooting back in the direction of the apartment unit from around the stairwell doorway. According to a witness, McAdoo then attempted to get HK down the stairs and out of the building, but eventually bailed on his attempt to help HK, which explains why many online believe that McAdoo left HK for dead. Meanwhile, police responded to calls of shots fired within Parkway Gardens, and when they arrived, they were informed that HK, real name Hakeem Murray, had suffered several gun- Cause, cause you gotta think, he getting shot sent they home. Only so much he can do. Short wins. HK was transported to the Northwestern Hospital, where he was pronounced dead at 8.53 p.m. Somehow, in the confusing aftermath, the killer would make it out of the building and escape to another apartment complex on South Michigan, where he stashed his gun. Later, he would agree to an interview by police and told them everything, whilst also handing them the gun he used to kill HK, which indeed matched the shell casings recovered at the scene. The man would even identify HK as the man who shot him from an ID parade. With that and other evidence from the crime scene, it would turn out to be a fairly clear case of self-defense, and the shooter was able to walk free under the mutual combatants law. In the same year, both brothers, T-Roy and HK, lost their lives to gun violence. And it would be a twisted irony that after all of the murders that he had committed in his brother's name, it would end up being a complete stranger that would end up taking the life of Oblock's supposed headshot king. But HK's death was not the end of the fallout following T-Roy's murder, as Oblock was seemingly not done with their getbacks, and still had their sights on yet another man involved in the murder of T-Roy, with that person being the second man who was there during the murder, Man Man, better known as Get Right, two of them.
By this point, it was well known that Madman, also known as Get Right or Can't Get Right, was TB's accomplice in the slaying of T-Roy. And just like TB, he likely knew it wasn't safe for him to be outside, considering the amount of murders that Oblock and Get Back Gang had carried out the previous summer. Around 9.50pm, Madman was standing outside of a store, waiting for food on the 400 block of E63, a location that's just a stone's throw away from Oblock, but very much Madman's own territory. Suddenly, a car pulled up, and when Madman was spotted, two shooters would hop out, running towards him, opening fire. In the gruesome CCTV footage from the murder, we can see how Man Man was initially hit before he would try and make an escape. But he would then be gunned down on the floor, with the shooters firing more shots, standing over him, to ensure that he was dead. Unfortunately, they didn't even stop there, but they would also end up shooting an innocent bystander, a 43-year-old janitor, Troy Hampton, who was just doing his job sweeping up outside of the store, and the whole incident would indeed be caught on CCTV camera where you can even see one of the gunmen purposely aiming at the man and firing several times. Commenters on Reddit would share their disgust at this bold double murder. This morning I was looking for the gunman who killed two men overnight. They were standing outside of a store in the city's Woodlawn neighborhood when someone started shooting. A 43-year-old man was shot in the chest. He died at the hospital. The other victim, a 22-year-old, also died. Police say the 22-year-old is a known gang member and was the intended target. Following the murder of Man Man, Chiracologists would begin to theorize just who could have potentially carried out this brutal assassination. Surprisingly, many in the community believed that one of the shooters could have been the infamous Chicago gangster dubbed the Gravedigger of Chirac, 051 Melly. The rumors of hatred between the two had begun after a viral video circulated from Poppy's balloon release following his funeral. And in the clip, Man Man can be seen dropping the Y, a disrespectful hand sign towards 051 Young Money, doing this in front of the camera and right in front of Melly. With the camera then panning to Melly, showing his shocked reaction, which even gets Looking a nervous laugh Eddie. out of FBG Duck, who is in attendance. The comments on YouTube would mention how this could have been a grave mistake, leading Melly to want to kill Man Man. But these rumors have since been debunked by members of STL, after FBG Young participated in an Ask Me Anything thread for the Chiracology subreddit in 2022, denying Melly was responsible for the incident, but indeed admitting that STL do not chill with 051, but still paying homage to Melly. For many, there was no need to theorize, as it seemed very clear which gang was responsible for this murder. When assessing the highlights from the police scanners in the area after the shooting, it would actually appear that STL began shooting back at O-Block almost instantly after the hit. Police officers arrived at the scene at 9.50pm, and just 20 minutes later, loud reports of gunshots were heard at 64th and King Drive, the heart of Parkway Gardens. Around 40 minutes later, more shots were reported fired in the area, with shell casings being found this time. In the next hour, more shots were fired, and casings were found by police. Clearly, SDL, aka Tukerville, had attempted to slide and retaliate on Oblock right away. Members of Oblock also took to the internet as usual and left many braggadocious clues about the murder. The very next day, King Von himself would actually go live with several Oblock members beginning to mock Man Man's death, making a joke out of his other name, Get Right or Can't Get Right, calling him Can't Get Up. There you go. Can't get right. There you go. There you go. Can't get right because I can't get right. I like everybody, not at one time. What just oh, happened? Dang, we <laughs> what just happened? A lot of glitches and everything. Hold on, you right there. We told him. I'll tell you. Tell me what happened. Who got killed? That's what I'm asking y'all. Who got killed, gang? Yeah. Can't get right, got killed. Merge. Can't get right, got killed. Can somebody show me a picture? I don't think I know y'all talking about. Is this can't get right? <laughs> is that can't get right? Hold on, is this, is this, oh, this, this ain't called snitching. I'm just trying to get verified. They tell us can't get up. Oh, oh, they always make some shit before we do it. They beat us to it every time. Y'all should start killing people. Oh, we Cause y'all be doing this. He's doing the name. Oh, Steve. The group would even mock the death of the innocent janitor, claiming that they will have to roll another one, seemingly unaware that the second victim of the shooting was indeed an innocent man. They said two down. Dang. Two men that no, I can't oh, take Oh, David, they said it on both of our lives. Two pieces? Two pieces? I can take one. Somebody roll out the one. Can't take Whoever else got hit. They would then continue reacting to their ops posting tributes to Man Man. Yeah. See that paragraph under that picture, you know it's over. Damn, like, best friend, you just told me to pop out. I remember back in the days when you do do You just told me to pop out, best Listen to his damn voice, man. <laughs> Why the f you do me like this, you bogus as hell? They ain't try to. <laughs> they gonna be this and this too. You, know, you better not get it like <laughs> Von and his crew would then begin making more direct disses at the situation, claiming that STL stands for steady taking losses, and that the FN gave him a fresh fade like Lil Boosie. Steady taking losses. <laughs> ST 
L, steady taking losses. <laughs> Before I gave him a fresh fade, Boosie Boos. Hey, they fucked up folks up. Fresh fade. Fresh fade. Why did they even put him on front street like he was even like that though? Von would then add that he probably knew he was gonna die and that no one will care he's gone. He probably knew he was gonna die. He did. I wish I could talk to him. Was like, don't nobody even care about can't get right like that. I don't think they're gonna slide like that. <laughs> I don't think nothing's gonna happen because of that. So they for the waste like, the rest of their money on that. We ain't even gonna act like nothing's gonna happen. Just y'all going to go in the house. Whoever ain't get shot, you lucky today. I'm going out. It's over. They would even continue to self-incriminate, detailing how the hit probably played out and poking fun at how Man Man was hit, trying to run away and how he couldn't move. But the self snitching didn't stop there, because just two weeks after that murder, King Von would famously tweet, shout out to that new op pack, my brothers made it. King Von even took the disses into his music. In his Bless the Booth freestyle, he would rap, he tried to run, but it ain't end right. They call him Can't Get Right. E Dog from O Block would also chime in, first posting to Twitter that the get back is not over, and then, three days later, posting, Your ass better get right or get left. Members of STL have even admitted that O Block were responsible for this murder. In 2021, FBG Young was interviewed by Truth Teller TV. When Young is questioned about an FBG Duck lyric regarding Man Man or Get Right picking up food, Young replies, explaining that a lot has happened on his block, but continuing to explain that a lot of stuff happened in their neighborhood and it's different because they're on blocks and people from O Block are in a gated community. So you was getting some food. You know what I'm talking about in the song, Thug Angels, okay? Mm -hmm. um, that happened right on the corner of y'all neighborhood. I don't know if you ever seen the stove, like the restaurant. It's like a, it was a restaurant at the time. It's a stove now. It's like on 63rd between Everhart and Vernon. So it's like, it's not like a corner, but it's like on the front street of the busy street, 63rd. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, in the neighborhood. A lot of shit happened in that neighborhood. I mean, a lot of shit happened in that neighborhood. It's like, it's just like, it's like different. Cause like, we own blocks and like, we own blocks and they like in the gay community. Right. As usual, internet sleuths would begin investigating who the gunmen were, with many of them landing on two prospective O Block members in particular, Muwop and Duke. One of the massive hints at the two being the shooters was Muwop's ominous post following the murder, where he says people wouldn't know the type of bond that him and Duke have, with the top comment clearly understanding the reference. Moreover, in an unreleased snippet from Muwop, he would rap Duke like King Kong standing over people in their own hood, seemingly describing the exact circumstances of Man Man's death. Muwop would post further hints at the pair's possible involvement after Duke was arrested for a separate incident, writing, you get the right, I got the left, we're going to meet back up. And soon after, Duke was actually shot at, but luckily he survived with only minor leg injuries. But even more shocking is just how deep the theories get that Muwop was the shooter on that original hit with many people arguing that Muwop actually has a distinctive gait, a style of walking and running that's actually very unique and easy to identify, as clips of him running in Oblock, as well as surveillance footage that came out years later during the trial where he was convicted of the murder of FBG Duck, with one poster on Reddit even doing a gait analysis theorizing that Muwop's run perfectly matched the shooter in the Get Right case. Ultimately, this particular murder was never solved, they did despite the rumors, science. nobody knows definitively. Um. Don't expect that much signs to come from this way. I ain't gonna like it. Lee killed Man Man. Once Man Man had passed, along with TB, both of the people who had killed T-Roy had lost their lives. However, the damage was done. Oblock would lose T-Roy's brother HK in a completely random incident. And despite the supposed goal of Get Back Gang being achieved, the Get Backs would indeed never stop. Numerous people from both sides would go on to lose their lives, including the most prominent rapper from STL, FBG Duck, and the most prominent person to come out of Oblock, King Von himself, who also ended up being shot dead in a freak incident that nobody could have predicted. But in many ways, the way that King Von died fit the exact characteristics of the sort of murders that him and his Get Back Gang committed. Whether Get Back Gang truly believes that they avenged T-Roy or not, the senseless cycle of violence and trauma can't be ignored. Those members choosing to go on a series of killings will never be able to bring back T-Roy, and their activities in the streets would only amount to more lives lost to murder or prison. Sadly, for everybody involved, even to this very day, no winners can really be identified. The King of Oblock, T-Roy's best friend King Von, is dead, and many of the original and most important members that celebrated Get Back Gang's murders are facing lifetimes in jail or dead too. Countless families have lost their loved ones, whether to the gun or the correctional system, and it makes you wonder, what is it all for? 
I personally pray that one day we as a society can find a solution to the never-ending violence in these communities. And the first step towards that is reflecting and understanding. So I want to end by making it very clear. This story does not intend to glorify or glamorize the gang lifestyle in any way. There are clearly no winners here. But if you or somebody you love has lost a loved one to the gun and are thinking about get backs, I urge you from the bottom of my heart, think again. Get backs, revenge and violence never truly heal the loss of a loved one. Life is precious. And I bet that if you could speak to any of the people who lost their lives in this story, innocent or otherwise, they would simply wish that they had taken a different and more positive chance. Because if you're sat there today with your life and your freedom intact, you still have a chance to make a change. Do something positive and leave the world and your community a better place than it was when you came into it. Otherwise, you're just doomed to join the others who chose violence and get backs in a jail cell or the unknown of what comes after life. You've only got one life and I beg you make the most of it. I hope you found that story interesting and despite all of the negativity involved in it, I hope that in the end you can learn a lesson and take away something positive. And most importantly, rest in peace to everybody I discussed who lost their lives too soon. Warning, this video 2017 was a crazy year for them. Both parties. I mean, a lot of shit that's, that was said in this video is kind of to be expected. The only one that I'm that I'm really fucked up on is the Billy Sergeant guy. That's the one I'm, I'm, I'm kind of messed up on. This. Let me know how y'all feel about this video down in the comment section. Put a happy belly in the comment section. Uh, let me know you made it to the end as well. Boy, Snorm gone.